you introduce yourself? Tell us your name and your DOC number, please. Anthony Riggins, 86391. Okay, and Council, would you introduce yourself? Good morning, Ms. Renanza. Jane Hogan on behalf of Mr. Riggins. With the committee's approval, I'll make a brief statement at the end of the hearing. Okay, thank you. Let me acknowledge we have some folks that have joined us. We have the Parole Project, Mr. Myers, Pastor James Brown, Carolyn Shelvin, Anthony Stewart, um, all in support. And we have a representative from the DA's office, Mr. Randall Meyer, who will be speaking also at the appropriate time. Uh, Mr. Riggins, you're here today. You submitted an application for clemency for a commutation of your sentence. You were sentenced in November 1997 in Jefferson Parish for a first degree murder conviction and you received a life sentence. Is that information correct? Yes, ma'am, it is. All right. Your case has been assigned to Mrs. Jackson. Would you answer her questions? Good morning. Yes. Good morning. How are you today? I'm doing pretty good. And you? Okay. I'm fine. Thank you. Um, so how old are you, Mr. Riggins? I'm 67 years old. And how long have you been incarcerated on this charge? How long have you been in prison? 46 years and a couple of months. All right. So you were about 20 or 21 when this crime was Okay. Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh, I reviewed your file. I have the, um, all the documents. I have all the police reports surrounding this incident um, or the information that was available to us surrounding this incident. But I'd like to hear from you. Uh, what happened? How did you end up taking Mr. Dayhauser's uh, life? What, what happened? Mr. Dan Howard and I got into an altercation and it became very, very tense. And not long after it becoming as tense as it was, I pulled out my weapon and I shot Mr. Dan Howard. Okay. Now, what was the, what was the disagreement or the altercation about? It was about me supposed to be being someone else. No, no, no. He accused you of selling drugs out of his business. Right. And that's what happened? That right. was what the disagreement was about. He believed that you were selling drugs out of his business, and so he did not want you there. Is that correct? Yes, yes ma'am. Okay, so how does that turn into, uh, why didn't you just leave? He didn't want you there. Why didn't you just leave? I did leave. But you came back. No, ma'am. That, that, uh, that, that was about seven to nine days apart. Okay. Okay, where, where did the killing take place? That was the very, the very last time we met. I said, but where did it happen? Oh, outside of the nightclub that he owned it. Right. So my question is, if you have this issue with him, why did you even go back to his nightclub? Well, I was riding with a guy that night. It wasn't my intention to go back, but we was riding and he stopped there to get something. And that's when we seen each other. And he said, well, look, I have a problem with this guy. Surely there's someplace else y'all could gotten the drink. Yes, ma'am. I should have told him that. Mm -hmm. Now, Mr. Uh, Dayhauser, I can't uh, pronounce Howard, was 78 years old. He was an elderly gentleman. Yes, ma'am. So why did you shoot him? At the time, I shot him. I just... Yeah. I just was afraid of what? Of being shot. Why were you afraid of being shot? Because that's why it had got so intense because I thought 
he had a weapon, but he didn't. Why'd you, why'd you think that? Because he was known to carry one. Again, he's a 78-year-old man. Uh, you shot him, I think, uh, three times? Yes, ma'am. And one time while he was laying on the ground. So, so that's not fear. I'm just trying to understand how you ended up killing this man over something that's relatively uh, minor. Yes, ma'am. So let's, let's talk about who you were at 21. What kind of work did you do? At, at 21, ma'am, the jobs I was doing was in and out jobs, like cutting grass, doing flower beds, painting houses and stuff like this. I didn't have a regular job that I got paid a check every week. Why not? Ma'am? Why, why didn't you have a regular job paid a check? Well, at the time... My life was unruly. I didn't have no directions in, in my life on which way to go. And, and my life had become a party. And with me partying, I wasn't, there was no way I could have kept a job. Were you using drugs? Yes, ma'am. What kind of drugs? Marijuana. Okay. Anything else besides marijuana? No, ma'am. Nothing? No, ma'am. What kind of drugs were you suspected of selling out of his business? That's supposed to have been heroin. Okay. Anything else besides heroin? Nothing. Okay. I see that in 2016, you appear before you. Had a hearing sometime in 2016 before yes, the ma'am. And you got a favorable recommendation. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. What happened? Why, why won't you? What happened? Maybe Ms. Hogan can. At, at, that, at that time, that was the time I had smoked a, a synthetic marijuana. That was after your hearing? No, ma'am. That was before I ever had a hearing. All right. You didn't have a hearing in 2016. No. You had applied. I applied. Ms. Jackson, right. I think Mr. Riggins had applied and was granted a hearing, but then the hearing was taken because he got a write-up in 2015, is my understanding. He did not have an actual part in hearing. No, ma'am. Okay. I'll have to go back and check. What? Okay. okay. So, um, how many write-ups have you had, Mr. Reagans? Last time I counted was forty, ma'am. That's that's what it shows. And that and the last one was in uh, two thousand nineteen, and that was contraband. And that was the synthetic marijuana. Is that correct? No, ma'am. Not in nineteen. Mm -hmm. What was nineteen? You had you had a contraband write up in two thousand nineteen. What was that for? Tobacco. Tobacco. Yes, ma'am. And since then, you've not had any other um, write ups. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. No, ma'am. I haven't had any since then. So tell me how you spent the last 46 years in prison, Mr. Reagan. What kind of programs have you taken? What kind of uh, service have you offered to the institution? Just tell us how you spent the last 46 years in prison. Yes, ma'am. When I come in 1978, they didn't have a... Uh, uh, Voltec school, nor did they have any other type of school. Mm -hmm. In 1981, a school was open at Camp C. 
And I enrolled in 1981. And at 1983, I received my GD. From that time, I joined the JC's organization, which was a club that went to speak on the street. I was a member of the Life of the Association for many, many years. I have also have been a, a student and an instructor for uh, Baton Rouge area, Red Cross, for as being HIV AIDS awareness instructor over the years. I have been in several different clubs like the uh, ARDC and SOC, SAC club. I've taken almost every class that was available for me to take here that came from re-entry, which was like 100 hours. Uh, uh, thank you for a change, anger management, substance abuse one and two. And whatever that was available for me to take and grow as a person, I have tried to do just that because what, I want to become better. What program do you think are programs that have made you the better man that you believe that you are? What programs have the most impact on you? Uh, Ma'am, I think victim awareness taught me so much I just never knew. It was so many victims involved in, in my crime. It, it taught me about empathy. It taught me that the whole entire neighborhood in which I committed the crime in was, was, was a victim. It taught me about my family and being victims and the primary, the secondary, and the treachery. You know, I just didn't know my crime impacted such a large scale of people and places. Now that you know that, how, how, does, how does that make you feel? Well, it make me understand the victim side of things and why victims feel the way they do. I can see both sides of the picture now, just from that class. What what are you most proud of? I'm most proud of just being able to learn and educate myself. And as long as I know I got God in my life, I know I'm going to be able to succeed in whatever it is that I'm seeking. What's your job at the prison? The job I have right now, I've been on 13 years. And we make cow feed, horse feed for every Department of Corrections that have prison enterprise stock. That's our job. We make it about the tons. Okay. And we send it out on trailer trucks to these different locations. You've done that job for 13 years? Yes, ma'am. And what other jobs have you had for a long time? The job before that, I had 25 years. That's the one where I took care of all the flower beds and tree planting. It was like uh, uh, just taking care of the yard around Camp L. But my job primarily was the flowers. Mm -hmm. I planned, I had flowers in the front, around the camp, the visit shade area, and places like that. Beautification, really. Hey, did you enjoy that? Yes, ma'am. That's you one I've been doing almost all my life. Ma'am? How did you end up switching jobs to the feed production? I got burnt out. I had been on that job 24 years. Mm -hmm. And I got burned out. And I job. Tell me about your work during COVID. Oh, during COVID, they had the dormitories where all the cooks live at were on quarantine at the time. 
And they needed someone to cook the turkey, to smoke the turkeys for Thanksgiving. Well, it started on 4th of July for the chicken and the ribs and stuff like that. I, I barbecue all night long just to prepare the meal for 4th of July itself. And I had a crew with me. And Thanksgiving and Christmas, it was the same thing. I smoked the turkeys, all the man courses I did. Me and a crew of people that I picked to be with me. Um, what clubs are you currently involved in? ARDC. What's that? That's the club. Uh, they normally buy all kinds of stuff for different uh, events for folks and stuff like that. And they handle most of the sports department. Um, you're class A trustee? Yes, ma'am. I've been oh, class A trustee for 30, right at 37 years. And I think you lost it briefly and then got it back? Yes, ma'am. I did twice. Okay. Why'd you lose it? What, ha what happened to cause you to lose your trustee then? <laughs> The first time in 2005, I trapped the alligator. Oh, okay. And the second time is oh, when... Oh, oh, let's, let's back that up. You trapped an alligator? Yes, ma'am. At Camp Elf. At Camp Elf. Why would that cause you to lose your trustee status? Well, they say I wasn't supposed to, during that time, they wasn't doing alligators up here in Angola. Well, if you trapped the alligator, what'd you do with it? Well, I didn't get a chance to do anything with it, but I was going to cook it if I could have got a chance. <laughs> so, did you kill it? Yes, ma'am. How'd you kill it? Well, uh, a dish bank blade. Okay, okay. And your plan was to cook it. Yes, ma'am. But you got written out for what? What was the rule violation? Third deceit. Okay. And then how long after that did you get your trustee status restored? Seven months. Okay. And uh, when did you lose it the second time? Was in 15, 2015. And what happened? That was when I had uh, smoked at uh, the Why'd you do that? I mean, you've been doing well. Why'd you do that? Ma'am, I'll be honest with you. There was nothing going on in my life for me to do something like that. You know, it. it I don't even know where the idea came from. All I know is I did it. And when I did it, it cost me a plenty. You know, it changed my life forever. Since that time, that what made me rejoin the different clubs that I did. There were the different classes that I did to try to make sure that I don't make that fall off the boat again. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do the right thing. How long did it, uh, when did you get your trustee status back? About seven and a half months later. So you've been a trustee since that incident? Yes, ma'am. So you have lots of uh, letters of support. Uh, Got some good family support. Um, what's your plan if you were successful today? What's your transition plan? I know you're working with the parole project, but beyond that, what's your, your transition plan? Well, I also have Serving Heart Outreach Program, who has a job in place for me. As soon as I can get there, if I'm granted. 
What kind of job? The job would be around the perimeters of the place itself. I Do guess like maintenance. Maintenance? Yes, ma'am. Okay. How's your health? My health is pretty good. <clears throat> it's pretty good. I haven't had any trouble. Well, ultimately, who, where do you plan to live? At the same facility. Forever? No, ma'am. Uh, okay. Where I'll be working, sick. That's right, but you. Well, after the program, I plan yes. to live with my sister. And where is that? That'll be in Wagman, Louisiana. Wagman? Wagman. Damn. I know. Uh, what would you do for a living in Wagman? Well, I would still be I, I would still be working. Doing what? Well, my brother-in-law had had this, this this place where he is normally cleaning barges and ships and stuff like that, and he had a guy over there to offer me a job if I ever got out. He would see to it that I would get a job there. They do nothing but clean uh, uh, ships. Um, Warren, what can you tell us about Mr. Reagan's? Hello, everybody. How y'all doing? Good morning. He said that, uh, Mr. Riggins uh, has been truthful in everything that he has been telling you. He did receive his GED in 1983. He has taken 100 hours, anger management, substance abuse, thank you for a change, victim awareness. Uh, he is an HIV peer educator. Um, the report about the alligator, it was true. He was fined $500 for, um, for killing the alligator because back then we did not have uh, tags being to be able to, uh, to hunt alligators. So um, I think Mr. Riggins is ready to uh, return back to society and be successful in whatever uh, endeavors that he pursue after. All right, thank you. Uh, that's all I have, Dr. Okay, thank you. We'll hear from uh, the folks who wanna speak in support. First, could we hear from Anthony Stewart? Thank you. There we go. You have to unmute your microphone. Still muted. I'm sorry, who are you calling? Anthony Stewart. Yes, ma'am, I'm here. Go ahead, sir. What would you like us to know about your father? Uh, first off, I want to say thank you guys for giving him this opportunity to be heard. Uh, I'm Anthony Stewart, his son, um, 20 years active duty military, Air Force. Um, I just want to say that... Um, Throughout these years of my life and my military career, my father's always been there for me. He's uh, also in my in his grandkids' life as well. Uh, we all have JPay accounts. They chat with him frequently, to where he can keep tabs on them and check up on them on visits and whatnot. Um, just proud of him. Um, I look up to him for his strength through all this. Um, when I need motivation, I look to him. Um, same thing with my kids. When I can't get through to them, I refer them to him. And, you know, he has my back. Um, and if he were to be pardoned and get out, he, you know, he would be a great part, great addition to our lives. And, uh, you know, he has, he has the support of my family, his siblings, 
uh, neighborhoods, friends, um, and that's it. Thank you, sir, and thank you for your service. And thank I think, you. are you there with Miss Carolyn? Yes, ma'am. All right, we'd like to hear from her next. Good morning. Go ahead, ma'am. What would you like us to know? Yes, my name is Carolyn Shelvin. I'm Anthony, Anthony's sister. And I'm here for him. I've been here all along, back and forth to Angola the whole duration of his time. We love him very much. And we're just praying for a second chance for him today. Miss Megan, thank you. Pastor Brown. I'm right here and I thank you again for giving me a chance. I've known Anthony all of our life. I'm a few years older than him. I've been pastoring over 40 years. We work with a program that's called Servant Heart International Outreach. We are working directly with DOC. As I speak, we have six with us. We have room for uh, 17 in our present facility and hoping to add on. But what we do with them, we continue that anger management training. Also, we have two classes in the morning that they can uh, uh, be a part of. Also, the housing is here. So we have the housing where DOC brings them directly to us. And they can stay with us at least six months. Uh, we have jobs. Uh, what Anthony will be doing, and since he's been doing that, we have the old Jefferson Parish Shell Ford District office and we love it looking well so he could keep this job until he die or can't do it anymore uh because we like keeping the place up so he has a job here that will be paying a living wage he also have a place a facility to stay in so uh we come up there almost uh, i've been in angola this year four times we have a big bus uh 55 passenger a uh, Louisiana coach bus that we bring the loved ones and family up there to meet with their loved ones. So we have a great relationship uh, with Secretary Jim LeBlanc, uh, parole and probation. And uh, we would love to have the opportunity to serve uh, Anthony uh, if you all would just give him another chance. Yes, sir. Thank you for uh, speaking with us this morning. Mr. Myers with the Parole Project, want to weigh in? Good morning, Carrie Myers with Louisiana Parole Project. Mr. Riggins now at 67 years old has spent uh, the vast majority of his life incarcerated since he's been 21, um, the last 46 years. Parole Project understands uh, his needs as, as uh, particularly because we, uh, our program is designed to help people who have served these long sentences. Uh, we will provide him those services upon his release. He'll come into our program uh, he'll be with us residentially uh, until he's, he's completes the program. And we both feel that he's ready to, to move on to his, his next step. He obviously, uh, it, you've seen that he has uh, long-term housing with his sister. He has employment available. He has family support and resources uh, when he does leave us. Um, but we are prepared to make sure that that initial transition um, is, goes well, that he has, he's connected to the services that he needs and that he gets to the advantage of having the peer mentorship for people who have already been successful uh, through this process and can help guide him through it. So we would just ask this board to grant Mr. Riggins his recommendation today. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Meyer, we'd like to hear from the DA's office, please. Good morning, uh, Randy Meyer, Assistant DA, Jefferson Parish. Um, this is a tough one for me, but I, I'm still going to oppose Mr. Riggins. Um, the, you know, the nature of the offense, um, he shot a man three, three times, once while the man was on the ground. Um, not sure he was completely honest with the board in, in stating he was shot out of fear when, when those facts kind of belay that. Um, and his, his poor judgment, I think, is still apparent um and that's based on in 2015 when he was granted a hearing 
and received a disciplinary report. And at that point, his he was uh, denied in that hearing. Uh, Mr. Riggins is aware that this hearing was upcoming, and in 2019, he has another disciplinary report. Um, total of 40 disciplinary reports during the course of his incarceration. But for those reasons, uh, we remain opposed to his request. Okay, thank you, sir. Mr. Riggins, before we turn it over to Ms. Hogan, is there something you'd like to tell the board? Yes, ma'am. I want to first, I want to thank each and every member of the board today for giving me this opportunity to be here today. And I also would like to extend my sorrow for the Don Horton family as a whole, each and every one of them that had to go through what I put them through with the suffering, the, the wakeful nights, you know, the, the broken heartedness. I would just like to tell the family of Mr. Donahorn that I'm sorry for my action. And I take full responsibility at the same time for my action. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Ms. Ms. Hogan? Thank you, Mr. Nasa. Um, Mr. Riggins is now 67 years old and has been incarcerated for 46 years. He's become someone who can admit when he's wrong. Um, he readily was, he was very forthcoming with this board in admitting that what he thought might have been um, the situation 46 years ago was not. He takes full responsibility for his actions. He makes no excuse for that. Um, he also takes full responsibility for every disciplinary action, uh, every disciplinary write-up that he has had. In the past 46 years, long before he had any chance of being released, Mr. Riggins began working toward his own rehabilitation, which is evident from his GED in 90, 1983, uh, involvement with clubs, taking every class that became available, working steadily with the same job for 25 years here, 12 years here. And although he does have disciplinary write-ups, it is, um, you know, it is relevant, the punishment that was received for that. So in 1987, Mr. Riggins was first made a Class A trustee, and he lost that on two occasions, once for the alligator, which is probably the most um, unique write-up situation that I've ever heard about. But that, that was seven months where he was, and he was never locked up for it. He was just transferred to population, and then he returned to Camp F after about seven months for, uh, in the 2000 five write-up and the 2015 write-up. Uh, the 2019 write-up was, was for tobacco and uh, he, was, he was just punished with a loss of privileges. Um, Mr. Riggins also in 1994 had a commutation recommendation to 60 years, which was never signed. He also is a low risk of recidivism. He's classified as a first offender and he's also volunteered and um, done all sorts of service projects and donated his hobby crafts to charitable events and done a lot of things to to help other people that you might not get certificates for. He's active in his faith and he has a phenomenal reentry plan with two different organizations that can provide him immediate transitional and uh, intermediate transitional. And then he has long term support with his with his sister, uh, Carolyn Shelvin. And so for all these reasons, given the length of time that Mr. Riggins has served, we would ask this board to commute his sentence to a term of 60 years or a term of years that would enable um, his, his release with any conditions. Thank you. All right, thank you. I think we're prepared to vote, Mrs. Jackson. Yeah. All right, Mr. Riggins, I enjoyed talking to you this morning. Um, I think you're ready. Uh, you have served 46 years. You in spite of some bumps in the road, you've maintained your trustee status for many years. You've maintained the same jobs for long stretches of time. Uh, you have positive remarks from the warden. You have a good uh, family support system. And the long surviving uh, family member of a victim that could be located is unopposed to your release. So my vote today would be to commute your sentence to 50 years. Mm. Mr. Mayor Bell. Thank you, ma'am. 
Mr. Riggins, I've listened very intently to uh, your interview, uh, and I agree with uh, Judge Jackson. My vote would be like Mr. Mm -hmm. Freeman. I agree with my colleagues, and my vote is likewise. Go ahead. All right, um, and I do agree, Mr. Riggins. My vote is the same. So on your behalf, sir, we'll make the recommendation that your sentence be commuted to 50 years. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.